We've got the run you all donated for us. Let's hear it. We're going to send it over to Testbot. Pokemon Blue. All right. I have with here me. Don't start time yet. We're going to start time again in a second. I have with me here me. Shenanigans, the proverbial Gen 1 couch uh, runner. <laughs> <laughs> Etiquette, famous for petting the Eevee. And a classic Let's Go runner. And Jim Freak over here runs Sword and is a NSC runner. Top NSC runner. This is gonna be Pokemon Blue, no save corruption. So we're not gonna do save corruption to win. You can start time. All right. And this is Gift Vex's task. I did not write this task. Gift Vex wrote this one. He's a, a classic Pokemon speedrunning programmer and tasser. Yeah, and uh, in honor of Gift Vex, uh, we decided to let him name the uh, character names for this run. Uh, he, he was pretty adamant he wanted to name the rival and the trainer. Uh, the trainer specifically after one of his best friends when he was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> and then now I know he's going to name the rival here. Oh, just a default name. Yeah, default name works. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, it's going to start out pretty much like every Pokemon Gen 1 run, uh, except, you know, luck is no longer a factor. So we're going to go ahead and do the rival fight. Um, we're going to be picking Bulbasaur for this run, which is, unfortunately... <laughs> well, Bulbasaur is the worst starter, so... And, and <laughs> no it's, it's chosen because it is the worst starter. Um, <laughs> it's actually the, the fastest starter to get through the rival fight because you can lose incredibly quickly. Yeah. The statistics on losing this fight is actually kind of insane. You need uh, two critical max rolls from the Charmander and then a max roll, which is about one in, what, 250 million? Yeah, it's like 250 million. It's insane. Yeah, also notice the audio is uh, glitched. That's part of the task. It's kind of like a swag strat here. Mm -hmm. It depends on the position and direction of NPCs in the game. and it, It's like GIFX puts so much time into making this not only really fast but entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Bulbasaur. Mm -hmm. But I also like to say that those critical hits, they might be rare, but they are critically important for the task uh, like that. So. Uh, we're doing oh, this you watch too much of that XY run. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so yeah, this is probably the best time for donations uh, during this rival fight. Uh, it'll be about three turns, so probably one or two. Oh, looks like he has his headphones off. All right, so. <laughs> Yeah, in addition to getting hit by Charmander a bunch, we're also going to be going for Tackle misses. Uh, this is not a Gen 1 miss, like yeah. you might think. Uh, tackle was 95% accurate in Generation 1, so mm -hmm. uh, it's just standard bad luck. <laughs> yeah, for the RTA route, we picked Charmander because it gets through the rival fight consistently the fastest, but Bulbasaur has the biggest top end, so for the task, we'll take Bulbasaur. Yeah, rival fight's over. All right, so we're, we're going to do the typical Gen 1 thing. We're going to go up to Viridian Forest, or Viridian City, get the parcel, and come back down. Um, while that's happening, Shen, do you want to go over the history of the run? Yeah, sure. Um, NSC kind of started as like a race category. A bunch of us wanted to race a glitched version of Gen 1. Uh, and with save corruption, it's just 0, 0, 0. Everyone's seen it. Uh, and that wouldn't be fun to race. So we came up with a category that was just ban that glitch, but allow everything else. And there's kind of been three big routes. The first one was we would glitch a Gengar in Mount Moon and then just steamroll the game with that. Uh, those were like 50 minutes. Then we had another route when we found the Brock Through Walls glitch. Those were usually about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, and then now we have this crazy route, which is absolutely insane, and you'll see in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And some extra YOLO grass on the way down here that you wouldn't mm -hmm. normally take in RTA. But we can get some donations now. Yep. All right, we have $200 from Olympian who says, my birthday is tomorrow, and figured I should donate some money to a good cause as an early gift. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> One thing we should also mention is that um, he talks to Oak from the side here. This scrolls the screen up a little bit farther, and it makes it so that when the rival walks up and down the screen, he's walking less tiles. And because the rival kind of does like a little swag walk and goes really <laughs> slow, we want to make sure that he's walking for as little as possible. Yeah, the rival takes about, um, each one of his tiles takes about the same amount of time as one or two of our tiles. So we sacrifice three tiles to make him walk two less. Still don't know how he beats us to all the gyms. Look how slow he walks. No kidding. Um, it's also <laughs> worth noting you can talk to him from behind. Um, in fact, in yellow, you'll actually see runners talk to him from behind because if you talk to him from the side, the Pikachu gets in the way and he has to jump out of the way and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so as we're going up to Viridian City here, um, 
in typical Gen 1 fashion, we're actually going to uh, go to the Pokemon Mart. We're going to get some Pokeballs. Uh, actually, one Pokeball, because we get perfect luck. <laughs> and we're going to catch our new starter, our new main Pokemon, uh, on Route 22. Yeah, you might see in Gen 1 speedruns now we use manipulations to hard reset the console and get a catch consistently. So we can do it with one ball in RTA even. But the task doesn't need to hard reset the console because it's tracking everything from the point that we've like turned it on five minutes ago. Yeah, normally we would save uh, right about here and then walk over to Route 22 to catch the main. But for this run, we don't need to do that. Um, yeah, most RTA runners know the Nidoran Minip, so this is going to be a no-save Nidoran Minip. Uh, that's not Nidoran. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not doing Nidoran here. Uh, we're going to catch the Spiro. Um, it's also worth noting that with doing these RNG Manips RTA, you can actually catch Pokemon using a uh, frame-perfect input. Uh, this game allows you to buffer so many inputs, so that's what really makes RNG Manips possible in RTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really only the A press through the uh, whatever Pokemon has appeared. That's really the only like difficult A press for a manipulation. Yeah, and even that has like a four-frame window or something yeah. like that. All right, we're going to deposit some Pokemon here and then heal to set our warp point. Uh, Rokun, you got any more do donations for us? I have a few, yes. We've got $200 from the Fluffy K that just says Taskbot OP. I've got $500 from Mr. X who says, we give what you must because we can. Thank you to both of you for your generous donations. Awesome. And also, I have $100 from Fabi Yu who says, Taskbot is love, Task Goose is honk. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad we dumped that bulb of store. Oh, yeah. I don't like having that on me. And we also manipulated the uh, NPCs in, in that uh, PC to go up and down exactly when yeah. we wanted them to. Yeah, so uh, the Spearow that we just captured, we're going to be using that as our main Pokemon for a little bit. And we actually manipulated the stats as well. So this specific uh, Spearow has very good attack, very good speed, and very bad special and defense. So... Uh, that might seem kind of weird that we uh, want to take damage, but we do actually need to. And something else to notice, uh, a lot of the patches of grass can't generate encounters in Gen 1. It's the ones with the flower on the bottom right. Tash just ignores that. It could just walk on the right side of like this line of grass, but it just goes all over the place. Just Why not? Maximum yeah. swag. <laughs> Coming up is the uh, level 9 uh, Weedle fight. It's uh, pretty much the last fight before Pewter. Uh, this thing's going to take two pecks to kill. Wait a minute, that's interesting. All right, then. That seems a pretty... That's a one in a hundred, right? Yeah, that's a one in a hundred for a level five Pikachu. Uh, I hope we don't die. Yeah, we should be fine. This As long as it doesn't crit, we're fine. Oh, oh. okay. Well, All right, well... Uh, are we going to desync now? Uh, uh, surely the task accounted for this. Somehow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it right, looks like the task like accounted for it. Right, okay, cool. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep going then. Mm -hmm. All right, we can try again. We can just go back up to... Forest. Yeah, I'll just head back there. No big deal. It only costs like a minute. Yeah, and, and, and the task, you know, it's going to go all through all this grass. It doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, right through the grass. <laughs> right through. Uh, so coming up right when we get through this door, uh, we're actually going to do the level 9 Weedle fight. Uh, it's not going to die in one critical peck, so we're going to hit it with two non-critical pecks. Um, and we're also going to take two critical poison stings. That's going to knock us down into red bar. Um, if you know anything about Gen 1 speedruns, red bar is very important because it allows us to skip certain audio jingles, things like Pokemon Cries as well as level up jingles. And even though we're doing a few fights here, it's still worth it to get the red bar for just a couple of fights. I hope you enjoy this sound. <laughs> All right, so right here we're going to do the level 9 Weedle fight. Um, this fight, this uh, Weedle doesn't die in one critical peck, so unfortunately we have to do two non-critical pecks. Luckily, we're already in Red Bar. We don't have to get hit by the Weedle at all. The string shot fail here is faster than missing a move. That but it failed text is faster than the X attack missed. So just every little nuance. That's weird. Don't refresh the stream. Everything is fine. We're not Okay, lagging. we're walking slower, but we're able to walk still. Hopefully, we can get to Pewter somehow. Dude, it's oh, the man. graduation march. And at least he's in sync with the music. Yeah, Why yeah. didn't we get seen? Okay, at least we're, we're, we're going to have the level 9 Weedle fight. Yeah. We might yeah. not be able to critic, uh, kill it with a critical, but we can at least kill it with two non-critical. There's, there's two Pokemon. There's two but Pokemon. Two po <laughs> 
Back to level six. That's that level one's six. level six. Okay. Yeah, that might go down to a critical then. I think, yeah, yeah, that'll work. You know, if we're lucky, of All course. Right. Okay. Red bar skipping the level up jingle there and the Caterpie cry. Saves, you know, a couple seconds here and there. Got it. All right, so now we're done with that bug catcher. We can actually go to Pewter City, yeah, finally. Yeah, now we can finally make our wow. way there. Oh. oh. <laughs> nice. And here's the Hall of Fame. That's the Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's the Hall of Fame. Right uh, so a really quick explanation of what just happened. Uh, you can find more, like, detailed information on pastvideos.org. Um, but basically, we use the death fly in all those fights to increase our map script index to a point where we can actually point the game to run code in different places of memory. Um, the trainer ID, the Bulbasaur, all that kind of stuff. And that actually just warps us to the Hall of Fame. Yep. So time's coming up real quick. And time. Time. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. This has been the task block at AGDQ 2020. Again, I had shenanigans, etiquette, and Jim Freak here with me, Ty Kevin 83 on the commentary for the Pokemon Blue Task. If you want to see more, yes, taskvideos.org has a lot of information on the tasking. Discord.task.bot if you want to check out any of the TaskBot uh, team. And also, yep, we have uh, t-shirts for TaskBot available from the Yeti. Thank you very much. Thank and you. This is Dwayne Thank you. <laughs> I want to send out a huge shout out to everyone who was involved in this. It's actually a really long list. Lord Tom, Maru, and Tampa made the Super Mario Brothers three tasks. Aglar, Andrew G. I think that's Aglar. Anyway, yeah, Aglar. Andrew G. Uh, made the Super Mario Brothers two tasks. Givefex made the tasks for Pokemon Blue No Safe Corruption. And then we had Jabim, the Haxor, Glitchcat Seven, Sven, Shenanigans, Etikat, Jim Freak Seven Thirty Nine, Ty Kevin Eighty Three, and sort of myself on the couch for commentary. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank everyone who put in an effort for this across the Discord.tas.bot community. Thank you so much for the support from Caden, Angel Wind. Onosaurus. Extremes there's, who made the uh, Game Boy interface software exactly, to do this Extremes playback. made that. We have folks, there's so many people. I'm going to forget somebody. There's so many people. <laughs> uh, it's impossible to get everybody.